Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We are going to talk about food. I really wanted to sit outside. It is gorgeous outside, but it's a little windy and I think <laughs> that it's gonna ruin my footage. So I'm borrowing the light from outside and I'm just sitting on my kitchen floor. <laughs> Today I really wanted to talk to you about picky eaters. I get this question probably a couple times a day and that's without comments being turned on. So people are finding me on email and on Instagram to ask me questions about picky eaters and how I feed my kids healthy. Do I not have picky eaters at all? How do I get around feeding picky eaters and the kind of tips I have? So I usually try to write them back a little bit, but I thought it's probably time to make a video about this. So to answer some of those questions, yes, we do have picky eaters. In fact, I think almost all of my kids have gone through a very picky stage that lasts about one to two years. I've had two and, or I have one, had one child and now I'm on my second that have been very picky where it lasts a number of years. And I'm gonna tell you how I dealt with that. So I think it's really common for kids to just be picky eaters. When I had my first toddler, I had a baby along with me, and I remember my doctor, who was a good friend of mine, I, when I was working as a nurse, I worked for him for a while. He's great, kind of old school in his approach. But I remember him asking me about what my toddler, Judah, my oldest, ate. And I just remember um, telling him that no, I don't cook different dinners for him. We just give him what we're eating. And most of the time he likes it, but when he doesn't, I don't worry about it that much. And, and I was kind of feeling a little unsure. And my doctor reassured me that kids get most of their calories in the morning and then they eat a lot of their calories again at lunch and they eat usually the least of their calories in the evening. So he assured me that if they're not eating a lot of dinner, that's really normal for toddlers and for young children to not eat a lot at dinner time and to eat bigger breakfasts and lunches. And it really resonated with me because my toddler was eating a lot for breakfast, a little less for lunch, and a whole lot less for dinner. And so it kind of put me at ease and it gave me sort of permission in my own mind to, to not push dinner on them or be so concerned about dinner that I'm making different dinners just to make sure that the child is eating. I personally think that this has helped my kids be really good eaters because we just give them the dinner that we're always eating. I know this might not be for everybody. This is just what we did and I don't want this to be controversial at all. If you don't like this idea, don't take it. If you need a different kind of idea, you can talk to your pediatrician or your doctor. My doctor assured me that it was fine for them to eat this way. So I've always kind of made sure that breakfasts and lunches are things that almost all of my kids like a lot. And I'll tell you what I do when they don't like breakfast or lunch, but let's start with dinner. So dinner, we have always just cooked the kind of food that we like. We like a lot of different kind of foreign foods. We like it sometimes spicy, so I don't mind adapting the dinner a little bit for different kids. We have a large family, we have nine kids and they're all eating our dinners. So if we make a, a dinner that's more spicy, my girls, Belle and Tori, they don't like spice. So they will always just add sour cream on top. Sour cream pretty much tastes good on everything, <laughs> at least in our house and anything spicy that is. And so they'll add that or yogurt on top of their um, dinner, mix it in. And they're usually happy with that. Um, I also don't make it the most spicy kind of meals. And then like Micah, he loves spice and Judah. So they'll add extra spice a lot of times to their meals or Solo or I. So we make meals that can be adapted for different needs. If all of my kids don't like a certain thing, I'm probably not gonna make it very often, but I can't think of much like that. But I mostly want them to try a lot of different kinds of foods. Bye Hope, have fun. <laughs> Bye, okay, go outside. It's kind of loud in here because my kids are all around. It's the middle of the day, but right now my pickiest eater is Eli, and he's in a phase, um, he was like Luca, who is now 12, and Luca you went through like four or five years of just not wanting to eat almost everything we made, and so we would just ask them to take one bite, and a lot of times, Luca would find that he liked it, but he would still have to be talked into that one bite the next time we had it. So sometimes if he was really hungry, he would eat 
that meal because he tried that one bite and realized, oh, I liked it. And a lot of times he would like gag and say he didn't like it at all. As long as he tried a bite, I was fine with it. And so Eli's the same way. We ask him to try to take one bite if he can and just to try the food. And I would say about half of the time he finds out he really does like it. So he doesn't, he actually is different in that he doesn't like carbs very much so he doesn't like any rices or noodles or potatoes unless it's french fries and there's um different things like that he doesn't like so we know he likes meat so when we're making his plate we'll put a little more of the meat on there um, but ask him to take a bite of, of his vegetable and his grain or whatever too so we're not making separate dinners for everybody we're making one big meal um, we cook with peanut butter here and there. Uh, if we make peanut butter chicken, which I did a video on recently, Belle does not like peanut butter in a lot of meals. She doesn't mind it in Solo's Kenyan food, but she doesn't like it in that Indonesian peanut butter chicken. So I pull out her chicken just before I add the peanut butter because it's the last step. It's really easy for me to do. If there's simple things like that I can do that I know will help them really like it, I am so happy to do that and I will make those adjustments as needed. I'm just not like cooking chicken nuggets <laughs> for the kid that doesn't like the food. Okay, so what happens when they took that one bite and they really do not like it? Cause that does happen often, um, especially when I have that, with that child that's in the picky stage. One thing I don't do is we don't do a lot of milk at dinner unless everybody really likes the food. So if they like the food, we'll just pass out the milk for everybody to drink. But if not, they really can fill up on that milk and then they won't be motivated at all to eat their food and because milk can give them a lot of calories like that. So I don't give them, especially right at the beginning of dinner, I wouldn't just necessarily give a child as picky <laughs> milk, which means nobody at the table is gonna get it right away. And then we'll kind of see how that dinner goes. If I, I can usually tell if my child is really hungry or if they're just gonna be okay without eating a lot. And I don't worry about it if I can tell that they're just gonna be okay, if they're not begging a lot. Um, sometimes they'll be like really wanting an orange or something and I can tell that he really doesn't like this meal and he's really hungry. So I then at the end of dinner will be like, okay, you can have an orange or a banana. Um, I don't, my goal is not for him to go to bed hungry, but he never goes to bed hungry. Let me tell you that. So he's six by the way, and he's a little old for being one of my picky ones. But like I said, Luca was just like that. And uh, if I really feel like he's hungry, even at night, again, I'll let him have a string cheese or something before he goes to bed. But we're just picking string cheese or fruit is just something healthy. While we're sitting down to dinner, I'm not just like piling on fruit for him while everybody else is eating dinner. It's just later, if I feel like he really is hungry, I will let him have that. But yeah, that works for us. It's worked for us really good so far. Luca, I told you, I think he was my pickiest of all of my kids. <laughs> he would hardly eat anything. He had a really sensitive gag reflex. And because we did this exact same way with him, he now eats more foods than any of my kids. He loves making himself a salad at lunch and he puts onions and tomatoes and all kinds of things on it, um, just like I would put on my salads. And he likes more foods than any of my kids. That is a really loud airplane. <laughs> He likes more than any of them, so that gives me a lot of hope. I don't worry too much about them consistently not eating a lot for dinner when they're in that very young elementary or toddler stage all through there. I think introducing a lot to their palate really early on helps my babies. I've always made some baby food for them just in the very beginning of them eating, but I move on to our table food really quickly. So if we're having spaghetti, my nine month old, my eight month old even probably is having spaghetti along with us. So they're getting what we're getting all the time. They're used to having curry many, many times, that curry flavor well before they are one year old. And so I think most of my kids have not been extremely picky. If they're a little picky, it only lasts out one or two years. And we just ask them to take that bite and then move on. If they just kind of moved on and want to play, or whatever, then I know they're probably not that hungry and I don't worry about it. Another thing I think that helps kids eat better at dinner and eat healthier foods is to not snack a lot. Snacking, actually, you see, if you look at my grocery hauls and stuff, you see that we buy one snack per day or each week. How do we do that? Like every Monday is popsicles right now. Tuesdays is, Eli, help me out, what's Tuesdays? Tuesdays is hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs. Wednesdays is frozen fruit. 
Thursdays is granola bars. Granola bars. They get one granola bar. Friday is pretzels. pretzels. And, and Saturday is yogurt. Saturday is yogurt. So they get their own little individual yogurt. So I only started that a few years ago. We used to just have like, if you're hungry for a snack, you can have a piece of fruit. I did that for like 12 years. <laughs> Just started buying snacks a few years ago just to change it up a little bit. Um, but before, my budget was really tight for food and I thought if they were really hungry, they can have fruit and that'll be okay. Um, but even now, we don't do big snacks. At three o'clock, they get that one thing. And I have people write me all the time like, baby's up, hold on. <laughs> Okay, so what was I saying? Oh, I have people write me sometimes like, that little granola bar would not be enough for my 15 year old. Well, my 15 year old doesn't get full with that granola bar. And he'll eat some fruit along the side with it. But my goal is not for them to get full for snack. I really want them hungry for dinner. I really want them hungry for dinner. When they come to dinner hungry, like sometimes on pretzel day, they can, I can lose track of that big thing of pretzels. <laughs> It can get like half of a thing eaten or more real fast around here. And those nights, sometimes if I, especially if I lost track of it, nobody's eating dinner that well. So they really can fill up on snacks and not be motivated to eat the healthy stuff in front of them. When they are hungry, they are way more motivated. When you think about it, you and I are probably the same way. If I am really hungry, even that salad, even if I don't love salads, that's a bad example because I love salads. <laughs> I don't know what example to give you, but that food is gonna look a whole lot better and it's gonna taste a lot better no matter whether I really love that food or I just sort of like it. It looks better, it tastes better, everything when I'm really hungry. And so I want them to come to dinner hungry. It's always kind of been my goal. So limiting milk um, throughout the day, limiting um, snacking. It's good. That's why we have three o'clock snack. Like if we kind of forgot about it and it's four and we're planning to eat at five, 5.30, I might not let them have it. Maybe if dinner's gonna be at six or 6.30, I may go ahead and let them have it, but yeah, I'm kinda picky about that just because I really want them to eat the good stuff. We make healthy dinners, we always have a lot of vegetable, we have whole grains for them, and I want them to fill up on that good stuff and not like junky processed stuff. I'm really going about this backward, but I've always made sure that lunch and breakfast are things that my kids really like. They like oatmeal, they like healthy things, thank goodness, we do eggs and oatmeal and different things like that. And so they do fill up on those good, wholesome things for breakfast and for lunch. Now, I don't usually make a different thing if somebody doesn't like something. Tori, there's one thing you don't like. What is it for breakfast? She, Tori doesn't like yogurt, but we usually have yogurt with granola on top. So I let her just have granola with milk in it. There might be something else, like when we have applesauce and toast and cottage cheese, that might not be enough for Judah, and he might make a bowl of oatmeal on the side. So I'm pretty flexible about those things. This is basically what we're eating for breakfast. If we can modify it a little to make you happy, we'll do that. And then at lunchtime, it's basically the same thing. But if we can modify it a little to make them happy, more than happy to do that because I want them to be really fill up for those good meals. We do vegetables and when I give them a choice. Some of them like snap peas, some of them like carrots. I don't think any of them like both. <laughs> so I have an assortment of things that I know they'll like something of and then they can always eat fruit. Oh, say hi. Say hi. 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 <laughs> We're about to travel overseas soon and it helps a lot when kids are able to eat a wide variety of things. Uh, still, it's hard <laughs> when they're not eating the things they're used to, but at least they're adventurous eaters, and so I appreciate that. One last thing that I think helps make sure kids are eating healthy and well <laughs> is to eat all together at a family dinner. And so, Solo doesn't even know <laughs> what subject we're talking about, but I'm gonna have him talk about that subject for a second. Oh my goodness. So I'm you don't have to, to talk about healthy. Okay. Why they eat healthy, but why do you think family dinners are important? Well, for one, there's nothing that brings people together better than food. I, I mean, any event that brings people That's together true. in a real meaningful way involves some kind of food. And, and, and why is that? It's just a, the natural thing you do for, to bond. Yeah. And, and so for a family to bond, I mean, uh, wouldn't you want to spend those precious moments with your families. Yeah. The other thing that we find is that communication in the family, just uh, being one as a unit, there's something about that, about just eating together that is uh, irreplaceable of something, uh, 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 
cannot be compared with anything else. I think uh, it helps the family come together mm -hmm. and families that eat together stay together. Hey, that's, there you go. Anyway, I do think it helps a lot. We try, you know, it's hard when your kids are getting older and they have this place to go and that place to go, thanks Solo. But we really do try and we know those years are short that we have with them. I w remember well having family dinners, sitting around and my parents asking a lot about what's going on in our lives all the time and it really helped keep communication open. So we try to do that with our kids and just sit down, a lot of times we'll do highs and lows. What was your high for the day? What was your low for the day? And everybody goes around the table, including us, and we talk about it, and the babies babble along of what theirs was. <laughs> when Eli was younger, he used to say, if he watched TV that day, he said that was his low, and then if he jumped on the trampoline, he said that was his high. And it took us a while to figure out that he meant he was the lowest when he was laying down watching TV, and he was the highest when he was jumping on the trampoline. <laughs> Anyway, it's cute and it's fun and it's great. Uh, it's a great chance to get conversation going But there's a lot of ways to get conversation going around the dinner table and we think it's really important We have to work for it. It doesn't happen every night of the week at our house But as much as we possibly can so there's just another little tip for you I hope you guys have a great day. It's kind of loud and chaotic here I need to get back to what I'm supposed to be doing, but we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching today guys Ha, ha, ha.